The story that I'm about to tell you is true. In fact, it deals with a matter of truth. It includes kings, a courageous prophet, a conversation in heaven, and a battle. So let's begin. First off, King Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, decided to become allies with King Ahab of Israel. And after a couple years, it was time for a visit. So he went to see him in Samaria. And that's where our story begins today. But before we get going, it's important for you to know that King Jehoshaphat was someone who wanted to honor God and love him, while King Ahab was a very evil man who did not follow God. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. Well, King Jehoshaphat, hey, how are you enjoying this grand feast and you and your people? Are you enjoying this? Yes, King Ahab, thank you so much. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad you joined yourself. Um, I I've got a question for you. Oh, say on. Well, you see, I was thinking about this the other day, and, and you know, Ramoth and Gilead down the way, that city down there, mm -hmm. it really belongs to us. You know, it's part of Israel. But the problem is Assyria. The king of Assyria, he's moved in there, and none of us, none of our people have done anything to get it back. So I was wondering if you would be able to come with me and we'll go get that city back. Oh, oh well, uh, I am as you are, King Ahab, and my people as your people. So, yes, we will help you with this war. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, but first, uh, please, inquire of the Lord. King Ahab did as King Jehoshaphat asked, and he gathered 400 prophets. These were guys who were known for listening to God and giving messages to the people from God. And Ahab asked them, should we go up to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or should I stay here and, and leave them alone? And I'm going to read to you from the Bible what the prophets answered. They said, go up and God will deliver it into the king's hand. And all 400 of the prophets were saying the same thing. But apparently, King Jehoshaphat wasn't satisfied. Let's see what he says. Hmm. Uh, is there not another prophet of the Lord of whom we may inquire? What? <sighs> yes, there is. Huh, there... There's one. Mm -hmm. His name's Micaiah. And uh, I hate him, though. Oh, He always only prophesies evil against me. He's never said one good thing about me. All right. Hey, go get Micaiah, the son of Ilkel. Go, go get him and, and have him come here. Oh, man. While the king waited for Micaiah to come, the other 400 prophets continued to prophesy and say, Go up to Ramoth Gilead! You will for sure win. And in the meantime, the messenger made it to Micaiah's house. Micaiah, the king has called for you. He wants to hear what you say the, that God is saying about the upcoming battle. And just so you know, all the other prophets have spoken very favorably to the king, and you would be wise to speak that as well. Ah, come here. Let me tell you something. As surely as the Lord lives, I will only speak what God says. <clears throat> Come on. Wow, Micaiah was committed to God and to speak the truth. You know, that reminds me of something that Paul wrote to the followers of Jesus in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. He says, Wherefore, putting away lying, Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. You know, if you are a follower of Jesus, God doesn't want you to lie. Instead, he wants you to trust him, to give you the strength to overcome your fear and to speak the truth. Now, that might look like going and admitting that you were wrong about something, confessing something that you did, even though you know you're going to get in trouble. Or it might look like going and asking someone for help, even though you might feel embarrassed. And it also might look like going and telling other people about Jesus and what he's done for them and who he is. Whatever it is, God wants you to speak the truth in love without fear. 
And that starts with a choice. You can decide today that you are going to speak the truth just like Micaiah did. Because Micaiah was committed to God and to the truth. And he cared more about what God thought than about what the king thought. And I think Micaiah also had a sense of humor by what he does next. So, I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking about that. But if, if we did this, um, time could. Yeah. 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 Micaiah yeah. the prophet. Uh, Micaiah, hello there. Mm -hmm. I wish I could be saying it's good to see you, but <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, I was wondering, yeah. should I go up and take on Ramoth Gilead? <laughs> yes, king. Go up and conquer. You will be victorious. How many times do I need to make you swear to me that you are telling me only what the Lord is saying and you're not lying to me? Well, this is what the Lord said. He showed me a vision. He showed me that all of Israel was scattered alongside the countryside without their shepherd. And the Lord said, let every man go to his home in peace. Did I not tell you? That he only has evil things to say about me? <clears throat> but Micaiah wasn't done. God had told him more things that he needed to share, and it wasn't looking good for King Ahab. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw God sitting in heaven with the hopes of heaven on his left and his right. And he was asking, who would be there? Who could I ask to entice King Ahab so that he may go and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Wait a minute, you might be asking. Why is God talking about and even planning King Ahab's death? That's a good question. Do you remember what I was saying at the beginning of our lesson, how King Ahab was an evil man who didn't follow God? Well. Because of this, King Ahab deserved to die. Because God is a just God, and he is perfect. And the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that means me and you and every person in the whole world has sinned. And the Bible also tells us in Romans 6.23, it says, but the wages of sin is death. That means that you and I also deserve death. But that death isn't just a physical death. It means to be separated from God forever, both now and after we die. But there's hope. Thankfully, the verse doesn't end there. It keeps going and it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what? God is just, but he is also gracious. And because of his great love for you and for me, he sent his only son, Jesus, to come and die on a cross and take the punishment for your death and for my death. And then he came back to life three days later and he made the way so that you and I can be forgiven of our sins and we can have eternal life. Jesus offers this gift to everyone who will choose him and trust in him as their Lord and Savior. Sadly, King Ahab had not made God his Lord and he continued to do evil things. Micaiah continued to tell the king what he had seen, what God had told him. In 2 Chronicles 18, verse 20 and 21, it says, Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, how? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Micaiah told the king what he had seen, what God had showed him. And he said, King, this is coming to pass. This has happened. That's why these 400 prophets are lying to you. And King, it's, it's not going to go well for you. 
God has said some pretty hard things for you. And the other prophets got really angry. One of them came up and said rude things to Micaiah and slapped him on the face. And the king, oh, King Ahab, he was angry and he cried out. Ah, seize Micaiah, seize him, bind his hands and bind his hands, hey, go throw him in jail. And you know what, you're gonna stay I, in prison until I, want, I come back and let you out. Now get out of my sight. I want everyone to hear me. If you come back, King, alive, the God, the Lord of Israel, it does not speak through me. Come on, you. Come on. Can you believe that? Well, now that he's taken care of, good grief. Okay, let's get on with our battle plans. <laughs> okay, oh, as long as you're okay with it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, uh, but, but just in case there, there's anything to that, uh, we're, we're going to make sure this doesn't happen. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you what, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change. In fact, actually, why don't you wear the royal clothes? Oh, okay. And, um, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wear this, because that way, <laughs> that crazy old prophet... But that way, um, when we're in battle, people won't even recognize me at all. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so so we'll do that. And then, um, in fact, yeah, in fact, they won't even they won't even know me. I mean, can you can you recognize me? Uh, yeah, I didn't think so. so <laughs> see, I even had had my oh hey wait, this one too because this is like this is like the royal deal. Wow. Uh, here, you take that too. Thanks. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So. We'll do that. We'll go into battle, and then, uh, yeah, that's perfect. You look great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, the king's headed off to Ramoth Gilead. King Ahab in his disguise, and King Jehoshaphat in his nice kingly robes. But they weren't the only ones preparing for battle. The king of Syria was also getting ready, and he had all of his captains get together. He said, hey guys, today, don't bother fighting with any of the other soldiers. Just find the king of Israel, King Ahab, and get him. They were all looking out for the guy who looked like King Ahab. And guess who they saw? King Jehoshaphat. Oh no. The captain saw him. They all went over and started fighting. But King Jehoshaphat cried out and asked God, please help me. And then the captains realized, wait a second, that's not King Ahab. We better go look somewhere else. And they all left. Whew. King Jehoshaphat was safe. The Bible also says what happened next. And it's very interesting. It says that there was an archer, part of the Syrian army, and I, kind of randomly, he just decided to shoot an arrow, maybe towards the enemy. He shot it, and it went through the sky, and it found its way right to King Ahab, and it hit him right between his armor. And he cried out to his chariot driver, Ah! Take me out of the battle! I've been hit! His chariot driver took him away and to a place where he could watch the battle. And he was probably in a lot of pain. And he could see the battle the rest of the day, all the people fighting. He made it all the way to the end of the day. But at sunset, he died. Just like God had said would happen. And then the, um, some messengers went out and told all the army, both of the Israelites and of King Jehoshaphat's army of Judah, and told them all, go back to your cities, go back to your country. And they all had to flee and get away from the battle. Now, thinking back to Micaiah, I imagine that it was very hard for him to tell the truth, right? He, he probably had been afraid, but I bet he was glad that he had had the courage to do it anyways. And if you are a follower of Jesus, God is the same God. The God who gave Micaiah the courage to tell the truth is the same God who will give you the courage to tell the truth. And so I want to challenge you today to make that choice that whatever happens today, tomorrow, next week, that you want to tell the truth. And maybe you can start by thinking, hmm, is there something that I've been afraid to say something I've been avoiding saying that I know God wants me to, and you can start there. You know, in our lesson, we did learn about truth and how God always keeps his word. And if you remember from earlier, we learned in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. Without Jesus, we all deserve to be separated from God. But 
The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because of Jesus, you and I can be saved. And you might be wondering, saying, I don't think I've received that gift before. How do I receive it? Well, the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 15, it says that whoever believes in him, in Jesus, should not perish, but have eternal life. And to believe is just to trust. So if you've never trusted in Jesus before to be your Savior and your Lord, that's something that you can do right now. And you can know that God keeps his promises and that he will give you eternal life.